This is going to be presented by Mr. Ravinder Tucker, Managing Director and CEO of Vodafone Idea. He is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Vodafone Idea Limited, India's leading telecom service provider, effective 19th August 2019. Ravinder's professional experience of 25 plus years spans across cultures and geographies, building a strong track record in the field of business strategy, business planning, and development in the ICT sector. Associated with Vodafone Group since 1994, he has worked in leadership positions with several operating companies of Vodafone in multiple markets across the world. So ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure for me to invite him on the screen. And I would like all of you to join me with virtual applause. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you so much for being here. Looking forward to your session. Very good. Well, thank you very much. I hope you can uh, see and hear me fine. Uh, we always have to make sure in these virtual sessions that uh, the connections are good. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here, and and frankly, uh, the topic that we are talking about today, which is connecting the next 500 million, is an immensely important topic. I'm sure it's important to all the uh, marketeers uh, and all the companies who are attending this um, this session, uh, because it obviously uh, is a big number and provides a great opportunity to all the connected uh, people to understand. Uh, but it's also an important opportunity for uh, our business, the telecom business, which is to say, well, how will we get there? How will we make sure that we are enabling these connectivity? And as we know um, that uh, the future is all in digital, it's all in the connected world. I think this becomes even a more important topic. So without much ado, let me get started. I think I have a presentation. I don't know if that can be put up or not, but uh, hopefully. Uh, here we go. So uh, next slide, please. So as I was talking about, I think there is an enormous potential of connecting the next 500 million customers into the digital ecosystem. But before I get started, I think it's important to, uh, to think about it. But what is the digital ecosystem? What is broadband connectivity, which is the first part of the digital ecosystem, is to be connected um, to the Internet? Well, in India, for all practical purposes, it's mobile. It's mobile broadband. And I say that is that if you look at the numbers, the sheer numbers today, there are approximately 700 million, let's say, 4G or broadband connected customers, uh, which are there in mobile. And then there's about 20, 22 million, and the number changes a little bit um, on the fixed side. So while the fixed penetration continues to grow, it's a fraction of what the uh, mobility number is. So I think the interesting thing here, again, for people who are thinking about how this can be used in the future, for most people, the first time they experienced internet uh, and the, for, the, for the first time they experienced, uh, let's say, broadband connectivity, it happened on their mobile phones. And guess what? This is not going to change in the future. In the future, in fact, it will become more and more smartphone and mobile uh, driven. Now, if we talk about that, in that, if you look at it, we are still, we've made a lot of progress, but we still have a long way to go in that area. So think about it, smartphone penetration today uh, in India is at 53%. Now, probably all of us who are in this um, event uh, have all smartphones. Everybody that we know has smartphones. Uh, but even if we look at all of those, actually you realize that there is 53% penetration and out of that, only 46% uh, are connected to broadband connectivity, which is 4G penetration. So by any stretch of the imagination, if you think about the future and where the future is going, there's a long runway ahead of that. So there's no reason why this 4G penetration will not go from 46 to 50 to 60 to 70 to 80 and so on. And if we compare ourselves to any global peers, whether you're talking about emerged markets or even emerging markets, we still have a long runway to go. And if we think about it, when we were do, doing voice connectivity, we thought maybe at some point 50% penetration would happen, 70 will happen. It went to 50, 70, 80, 100, and then it went over 100. Well, for sure, you know, 4G connectivity and broadband connectivity will get to 100%, which means that we have still a long runway. And that's where bulk of the next 500 million our customers are going to come from. So let's go to the next slide, please. 
So why is this happening? And and it's a little bit of uh, introspection about you know what has led to even this level of penetration. Actually, the straight and simple answer to that is that you know India is becoming digital, um, and and certainly in the times that we are living in in the in the pandemic time, that has accelerated even further. So think about it from a government perspective. Uh, all the government initiatives, you know, when we talk about Aadhaar, for example, um, you know, a unique identity program, uh, 1.2 billion people have Aadhaar cards. Aadhaar is a digital identity. That means it doesn't exist physically. It only exists on people's mobile phones. Now, that is, of course, by far the largest project of this type in the world. Uh, but think about it. It's done in India. It's all digital. And those type of things have led to acceleration. And start talking about you know certain type of applications, whether it's WhatsApp with 400 million users, uh, of course Facebook and 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 Google and so on. For many of these digital companies, the largest customer base usually ends up sitting somewhere in India. That means the adoption of this has really really taken place. If I look at another simple stat, which is not on my charts, but but but, but frankly, it's very interesting to think about is. Um, if you look at the uh, the amount of data that's consumed by Indians every month is um, 12 gigabytes per subscriber per month, per customer per month. That is the largest amount on mobile anywhere in the world. So already, even with the smaller set of customers that we have, there's actually a huge amount of consumption. That means people are consuming data, they're connected, they're using uh, the services they're using it as entertainment, and it has become an integral part of their their lives. So, you know, to say that India is becoming digital, actually, we've come across the journey, and it continues to be digital. But then, what's the future? Where is it going to come from? Um, like, you know, not surprisingly, the next 500 million customers, a large number, is going to come from uh, rural India. Um, if you look at uh, penetration today in the urban areas in the cities, it's already well over 100 percent, 134 percent, whereas in rural tele density, it's 59 percent. So really a long way to go. Um, I think the other part is that, as I mentioned earlier, there's you know 450 million customers who don't have uh, 4G devices, who don't have smartphones. Of course, over time, all of them will actually end up getting smartphones and will get connected, or most of them will end up getting smartphones. So the opportunity certainly will come, if I was to summarize, more from rural India, and it will come from, obviously, migration of people from 2G to 4G, from feature phones over to smartphones. So I think that's really the, the, the big opportunity that will exist. Now, like most things, if you have this opportunity, uh, well, why is it not happening fast enough? Uh, can it be made faster? And so let's go to the next slide, and I'll talk a little bit about what do we think are the barriers that are there to this adoption? I think one thing we have to remember is that um, while, again, for most of the people who are connected to this conference, uh, especially because we're all connected digitally and we're coming through this virtual medium, uh, for us, this is something that we do every day. But when you look at a wider spectrum of, uh, of India, actually, there are many people who don't really know what does it mean to, to get into digital or become digital. And this sounds like a strange thing, but actually, if you are, um, you know, in certain segments, if you're a senior, sometimes if you're in rural India, you're a farmer. In many cases, if you are a woman in rural India, actually, you don't really know how do I uh, go digital. Even more importantly, what does it mean to become digital? It's not that straightforward. People don't necessarily understand it, and that certainly is a big big challenge. And somehow, as marketeers, as we have to think about the future, I think it's something that we have to address. Of course, there's always a challenge on uh, disposable income, uh, which is uh, I'm used to spending money on certain items. Uh, how do I make sure that I move my spend from one to the other? I think that becomes an important part. There's always the issue of, well, smartphones are more expensive. Um, how do I invest in that? I think this is an opportunity, and I'll talk a little bit more about it, but certainly to some extent for, for certain segments of people, this is certainly a, a, a barrier to adoption. I think one of the other things that we tend to, um, let's say, underestimate is for many people whose lives are going on right now, you know, you wake up every day, you go about your, your, your work, you know, your life is fine, it's, you know, things that you need to do are happening. 
suddenly now, you know, to say that, why do I have to go digital? Why do I have to do dif- Why do I have to do this thing differently? Why do I have to make my bills uh, payment online when I can walk into any store and make the payment? Or, you know, when I go to a, a store to buy something, why should I pay digitally when it's just easy for me to pay and I'm used to paying? In fact, I feel more comfortable paying um, in, in, in hard currency or physical currency. Now, these habits, these, let's say, uh, you know, ways of working or ways of going about your life, these are barriers that are quite significant. And they get harder and harder as you try to get people to move on to those. And I think people need to find a great incentive to say, why should I do that? I should see a benefit. And I think that's important. And I'm, we'll certainly talk more about it. And I'm, But I'm sure that this is something that all of you spend your time thinking about as you in each one of your businesses try to say, well, how do I get more people to go digital? Then I think there's always been, been, you know, the the breadth and the diversity of India. Uh, I think local languages is always an issue. Uh, It should never be underestimated. And I think it's very, very important that we actually look at that uh, every time we think about services. And then literacy is an issue. Uh, Again, you know, uh, uh, the, the the people that we usually mostly interact with, these are not issues, but as you go to rural India, literacy is an issue. And there, again, we have to make sure that the services are built in a certain way that allows for people who don't have a high level of education, don't necessarily know, um, you know, let's say mainstream languages, how do they get around that? I think that's important. And then last, which is, again, uh, we have to always look at is to say, well, why do we need it? What's the purpose? You know, I'm perfectly fine. Um, I don't really need this service. And I think it's uh, it's upon us to pull these people along to say, well, you know, here's a reason why you should uh, adopt this thing. So there are certainly a, the, these barriers of adoption. Um, if you move on to the next slide, and then I, and I talk um, specifically about, well, what are some of the things that we could do, um, you know, in that space? I think the four important buckets of area that we can work are the ones that I've listed here. I think the first thing is, if we're going to talk about, well, what is digital for these next 500 million and how does it work? I think there are two things that have to come very much in there, which is, first of all, we have to build services. We have to think about digital um, from a very inclusive perspective. We have to think about to say that this is something that we should, when we build something, we should build for the entire 1.3 billion population. So as we start thinking about services, it should be all inclusive. We should think about this as service that will have to reach that type of uh, a user base. And then, of course, we have to spend time in literacy. We have to teach people. Um, again, if you don't know how does digital work, it's easy for us to say, well, it's, it's intuitive, it's obvious, but it's not the case for everybody. And I, I think we have to make sure that people get trained. Uh, there are barriers, there are fears, there's some type of hesitation. And I think we need to make sure that we spend time uh, as a country and on each one of us in our industries to make sure that we push forward in, 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 uh, in digital inclusion and literacy. The second part is affordability. That is a big category. Um, I think the, the affordability has to be such that not only is it affordability, I'm talking about specifically in our business, which is around how do you get smartphones, how do you get connected to 4G network. But again, for each one of you, as you think about your businesses, I think we have to think afford, about affordability. And India always tends to be where the physical world has always been very, very driven by uh, affordability. It has been driven by price sensitivity. We have to think about digital in that sense as well. Sometimes digital actually has an advantage there, but we have to make sure that we deliver that to the uh, to the customers. Then I think the, the other part is to have um, this adoption. It is... It is our responsibility um, as as industries to create an ecosystem. Um, again, as I talked about, you know, um, if, if we are trying to get people an incentive to go to digital, well, what are we doing to make it easier for them to join? How? What are we doing? What kind of an ecosystem are we building around in terms of support? And actually, uh, a, a big part of the ecosystem is to really make it easier for people to you know, how do I get help in a particular place? How do I make sure that actually, if I run into a problem, there'll be somebody there to help me? Uh, because the biggest, sometimes the fear is, I go down this path, I'm not talking to a person, I'm interacting with a digital app or something, and if something goes wrong, I don't know who to get help from, and I don't want to go there. I think we have to build that ecosystem in there. And then last but not least is, is this has to be a sustained relationship. It cannot be 
uh, a one-time interaction. It has to be something that changes a consumer's life permanently so that they become digital and they remain digital and this has to be a sustained relationship so as as you know we think about in our business and i'm sure all of you guys think about it in your businesses as well each one of these four categories have to be there for us to actually have a ongoing longer sustained relationship with the next 500 million customers um, next slide please I'll briefly talk about uh, you know some of these. I already mentioned them, but of course, digital inclusion and literacy is very, very important. Um, and, I, and I have to say, I think the government has done a very good job of this inclusion, uh, especially when when um, you know uh, digital services are being developed. The, the the national digital services, as I mentioned, starting from Aadhaar card, but even the Jandhan schemes and other things, the the financial disbursements that take place, there is more and more incentive of people to go digital, and I think as more and more of government services also become digital then actually the incentive for people to become uh, important and digital inclusion becomes important um we've listed here two initiatives that we do here at the vodafone idea foundation uh, we've done a very large project uh, uh, in regards to financial literacy uh, which is called jadu ginnika uh, where you know large number of people almost one crore people have been impacted by that and, and any significant amount of these are women uh, where financial uh, literacy and understand making people understand this financial area has been very very good in the in the education sector there's been jigyasa uh, which is again you know uh, teachers are using the technology to uh, to teach students um, in, and this has been implemented in over 2,000 schools. And again, this is another part of inclusion as well as literacy. And, and I would encourage each one of you, again, in your businesses to think about how the digital inclusion can be done to make sure that your services that you are trying to, uh, to offer um, you know, are more inclusive and, and provide uh, education to uh, your potential customer base. Um, and certainly, as we think about this thing, since, I, as I mentioned, more and more of the customer base will come from uh, rural India, we have to think about bringing these programs that address specifically that particular segment of, of potential customers. Uh, next slide, please. The other area is around affordability and access. I, I, I sort of mentioned, so specifically, uh, again, for each of your industries, you have to think about it. But I'll give you some examples of what we do. Um, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, smartphones are a very important element of connecting people to broadband. And that's usually their first digital experience. Their first internet experience is through a smartphone. Now, uh, as we all know, smartphones are not all created equal. Uh, frankly, if you uh, spend a significant amount of your disposable income uh, buying a smartphone, and in some cases, you know, even if you spend 5,000 rupees, which is actually a very low end, end, end smartphone, uh, actually, as it turns out, the experience is not very good. So sometimes it turns you off. You make go make a significant investment, and then you find out actually the experience on that device is not very good. In fact, it turns you off for a very long period of time. And not only that, you feel cheated, like you spend money on something that you shouldn't have spent to. So I think it's important that we make sure that the first experience that people have is positive. What that means is that you know the program that we at Motorphone Idea, for example, have been have been working on is I would rather have a situation where let's try to get a good device to a person, uh, but maybe it's a refurbished device. Uh, so the experience is good as opposed to a new device, but it's very cheap and to some extent maybe it doesn't have the great experience. Let's see if we can get people refurbished devices which are certified and under warranty, but actually they are um, they can be bought at a cheaper price. Also another another thing that we've done is is really around um, providing people an ability to buy um, slightly higher end devices, which will provide a great experience, but buy them in installments and so go through financing. Um, uh, you know, we've hooked up with several NBFCs in which um, actually those services can be taken or devices can be bought in installments, uh, but, but they provide a great experience. So those type of things that we have to uh, keep on working on. Accessibility, uh, again, you know, the, it's, we, are the, we are the lowest, uh, you know, pricing market in the in the world, data pricing market in the world. So I wouldn't say access to 4Gs is at all an issue here in India. But certainly, again, for each one of your services, you have to think about as you get people onto your digital platforms, how much accessibility and affordability do you provide 
for them to be able to get onto that uh, fairly easily. So this is an important element as well. Next slide, please. Building an ecosystem, um, again, uh, very, very important. And I think this is, uh, in, in some ways, it is absolutely, absolutely critical. Um, you know, uh, uh, there's, there's plenty of work that's going on for, uh, you know, urban and millennials um, and, and, and people who have high disposable incomes. Um, you know, for those people, there's lots and lots of digital services that keep on popping up. And, and many times, you know, the focus of many of our companies, and actually it's easier to do that, is to focus on that group. But if you, as I mentioned, start thinking about rural, which is where the next 500 million are going to come from, if you start thinking about seniors, if you start thinking about, you know, women, especially uh, in, in rural areas, if you start thinking about farmers, if you start thinking about those type of segments, actually you have to realize that we have to really, if within this ecosystem, we have to address it in a very, very different manner. We have to come at it in a different manner that, that these services are much more relevant. They're much more adaptable for those segments and what has worked for the let's say the urban and the young and and rich doesn't apply to those guys and we have to think about it in a different manner and again i would encourage for each one of you from your industries as you think about it try to come up with different approaches but this ecosystem is absolutely critical because while we can provide let's say connectivity we can give a smartphone in their hand but at the same time if they are not able to connect with the right ecosystem I think all of that, this would be would be un, unsuccessful. Next slide, please. And last but not least is really around, uh, you know, even if you make uh, them have some transactions, it has to be a sustained relationship. And I think, uh, you know, it cannot be transactional or short term because otherwise you lose them quickly. And I think within that, one of the things that is, I think, very important is as more and more people come online and they become digital, um, we will see that the concerns on privacy, security, confidence of, is this service going to work? This is my hard earned money. Am I going to be abandoned? And building that trust becomes significantly more important. These next set of 500 million customers that we are talking about are actually much more concerned about these issues because they deal purely in the physical world today and there they see they are in much more control of those elements than any of us are on the digital world and i think they have this barrier which says unless i feel confident i will not join so again as we go and try to connect these next 500 million actually building this area of concerns or addressing their areas of concern around privacy security trust etc become even more and more important and then once you address those and you have the right ecosystem, you can have a sustained relationship going forward, which I think is absolutely critical for success in terms of getting these people and, 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 and working with them together. Next slide, please. So if I was to summarize, there is a huge opportunity. I, and I can tell you, and, and, and as was introduced by the moderator earlier as well, I have seen this journey in many, many countries, some of them developed markets, some of them developing markets. There is no reason why this will not happen in India. It will happen. What we can do is we can do several things to actually make this journey accelerated, to get this faster. So instead of doing this in the next five years, we can do it in four, we can do it in three, but we need to do certain things. And we need to directly address the barriers that I talked about as to how we can quickly you know, address those barriers and get people uh, into, into this digital, digital ecosystem. And affordability, relevance, building the ecosystem, and building that trust are actually one of the most important things that we can do. Uh, and I think if we all work together to do that part, and we work together as a unison, I think we can do that. It's great for consumers, it's great for India, and it's actually great for business. And I hope we got a chance to do all of this together. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you found it interesting and uh, good luck to each one of you. Uh, a virtual applause for Mr. Ravinda Thakka, Thakka for uh, his presentation and he clearly talks with a lot of experience and Gravitas having seen the developments as he rightly said across various markets and some of those uh, uh, trends will come to India and there I say 
that we will leapfrog as a nation. I mean, we're a country that this survives and this survives. We're not an or country, we're and. You know, a lot of things which may seem oxymoronish happen at the same time. Thank you, Mr. Takkar, for talking to Exchange for Media and uh, thank you for that uh, very comprehensive uh, presentation. Let me ask you my first question. Mr. Tucker, for the last 12 to 15 years, uh, I, as an entrepreneur and as, as somebody who watches the technology, media, and telecom space, the TMT, as we would call it, FANGS, as we call it now, uh, the lines between what is content, uh, what is a communication tool, and what is a commerce device are blurring. Uh, so what are your predictions? Uh, for true convergence as we move forward. In the last eight months, we've seen convergence of a different scale. And just give, to give you a data point uh, from the US, I don't have data on the UK market, but uh, e-commerce from 2000 to 2020 was 16% of the overall retailing. But in 2020, from 16, it went to 26% in a matter of eight months. So 16% in 20 years, and 10 person in eight months. That kind of leapfrogging and adoption is happening. So tell us, uh, what do you see uh, happening in India? You alluded to it in your presentation, but give us some more granularity and some more prediction. Um, yes, uh, Dr. Bakhtar, thank you, uh, first of all, um, for your comments earlier. And then um, uh, I think it's absolutely a very, very timely and a very, very interesting question. I have to say that you know I uh, was um, in another um, actually speech the other day, and 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 actually not long ago I was talking to uh, my employees as well who were actually asking me a very very similar question about uh, about what did I think, and and I have to say that I think there are two things that um, that we have learned in the last um, uh, let's say eight months or nine months of this pandemic uh, that we faced in India. Um, and I think the first thing that uh, that I would say is that uh, any change uh, that we thought um, was the, anything that we thought was not possible. Let's put it, let's start with that. Anything that we thought was not possible, actually, you realize that uh, it is possible, and it Absolutely. can be done. And this, you know, this conference that we're having, there is no way a year ago uh, if we would have even remotely thought about the fact that. Forget about whether we will do it or not. If we had ever thought, is it even possible? Actually, we couldn't have imagined that this was possible. We would always say, well, if there's no way it's possible. The technology is not going to be there. Uh, the um, uh, the capabilities don't exist. People don't have access to broadband. They don't have devices. This is too much. The technology doesn't exist. All of these things. And you realize, actually, the, all those issues and challenges were in our minds. And in many cases, what we are finding out is that in this new ecosystem and in this new world that we live in, I think what we what we jokingly say is we know technology is the answer. You have to figure out what is the question. And we almost have to go the other way, which is to say, if you can think of a problem, I know the solution. And the solution always is the technology that we have today. So technology has become so pervasive and in, in some ways, that we, we realize that the technology is so advanced and in many cases it's more advanced than even our mindset and thinking. So many times actually what is holding us back is our mindset of thinking rather than actually, uh, um, rather than to say that uh, that uh, technology is not there. Because many times we used to always make that excuse that technology is not there. Actually technology is there. What we have to do is we have to open up our mind to say, how do I, what is the problem that I'm trying to solve? I think that becomes an important part. The second part, I think, which is very, very critical is that anything we thought had a certain scale or a certain road growth rate at which it will go, actually that acceleration has taken place significantly. Anything that was you think was good could go at a growth rate of X, that's gonna go many, many times faster. And I think now that we've experienced that pace, we have to get ready that pace of change will be faster. The numbers that you talked about, which is the growth is gonna come a lot faster than what we are used to. What that means is that the divergence between, so what was happening was that there was slowly a divergence building between digital and non-digital world, but it was a slow divergence. We were all part of it. It's a little bit of you know that old adage of, 
if you're in a pot of boiling water or if you turn, you know, you're sitting in there, you're in there, you don't realize, but slowly it's boiling. Actually, this pandemic has led to the acceleration of that. What that means is that the gap has opened up much more significantly and will continue to open up, which means as businesses, as as, as service providers, as people who are trying to address, we have to adapt to that pace because the pace will continue. So in my mind, I think the two biggest things that are that trends that we have to think about is we know the answer is technology. What is the problem that you're trying to solve? And we have to be very critical about what exact problem we are trying to solve. And then the second part is the pace of change is very good. The good news is the technology is there. There are many, many problems that we can solve. We just have to know what we're trying to solve. Fantastically put. Uh, I would say, I would add to what you said, you know, never say never. Well, that's one of the lessons we've Correct. learned in lockdown Correct. in mm -hmm. times. And mind is like a parachute, it only works when it's open. Randy Posh, yeah. author of the last lecture, said that the brick walls in our minds are there to be broken. We just have mm -hmm. to be willing to climb them or break them. So I, you're exactly. absolutely right. I think uh, the last eight months, uh, we've learned many lessons. And as you rightly said, uh, you know, never say never. Uh, what you say is not possible uh, is more often than not possible. Uh, let me move on to my second question. Is uh, telecom industry and connectivity has possibly helped all of us survive? So COVID has given a new lease of life to telcos. Okay, uh, telcos had issues which I will not go into, which are well known, uh, uh, and they were facing challenges from a regulatory framework. They were facing challenges from an inconsistent policy. Uh, looks like some of those have been resolved, and from a growth in the market need standpoint, the telco stepped up the game, and in the last eight months made whether it was education of children possible, whether it was consumption of content possible, and most importantly, just doing uh, you know, your office work with that connection that is so important to be able to do a virtual meeting, a virtual event, to seek that consultation from the doctor for telemedicine. All that happened. Now, tell us, uh, 2021, you see a god of, hand, of God in some way, while we know the devastating effects of Corona in every part of the world and even in India. For telcos, uh, Corona was a was a positive impetus. Uh, tell me in 2021, some of these habits of virtual meetings, uh, of utilizing digital technology to be able to do things that we would do physically stay. But a lot of things that we are doing is because of compulsion and human beings tend to forget and go back to their habits. Uh, what do you think will telcos do to innovate on their own in 2021? Um, I think the, the uh, first of all, I think um, what you said is absolutely correct. You know, we, we went into a lockdown, um, as we know, we went into a lockdown uh, very quickly at very short notice. And, and suddenly we found ourselves in a place where, uh, you know, oh, two days from now, we're going to be in a lockdown. Um, if I remember, it was something like that, two days, three days, some, you know, very, very short notice. Um, and, uh, and, and, and it's a, it's a, you know, public health emergency, uh, only essential work is, it can be done. Otherwise you stay at home and you suddenly realize, um, you know, uh, we as a business, how do we make sure that actually we provide our service? I mean, ours is a very, very large distributed business. Uh, forget about how we sell business, but more importantly, how do we make sure that actually continues to work? You know, we have almost, you know, 200,000 physical sites across the country which need to operate, which need, you know, you need diesel to fill them up. Things go that bad. You have to go fix them. You have to change things. You have to do these things just to keep them running and working so that actually people can have connectivity and so on. And guess what? You know, uh, you know, it took it took us a short while, but frankly, we were able to deal with the situation. And again, necessity is the mother of invention. You get into this thing where it's necessity. You have to do it. And what that means is suddenly we found ways to do it. I mean, our, you know, just like we had our health workers uh, you know, and, and COVID warriors, we had our essential services people who were supported by the government by giving them permits so they can go into the right places, make sure that connectivity is provided. And frankly, in many cases, when you are in this pandemic and you're in, lock in lockdown, connectivity became your only lifeline. That was the only way to be connected with the rest of the world to find out what's going on outside. It became essential. 
And I think we managed to do that. And I think it's a, it's a very, very strong testament, not only to the industry, uh, but obviously for us, you know, to, or for our employees. And it's also a testament to the resiliency and the quality of the, the, the networks that we had built. Because, you know, we provide these services, we're not mandated to be provided, you know, to be for it to work with this quality. Actually, they work with the quality, which is crazy because our, our data usage, our you know, capacity exploded, and we were able to add capacity while we were in the lockdown and to be able to explode. So it was it was it was very, very strong effort by the industry and, and, and our team members in this in this challenging time. Now to your other sort of you know uh, comment and question about well, what happens as we come out of this, and I'm sure at some point we will come out of it. I think some of the things that have changed are irreversible. They're irreversible because we have we have learned, as I talked about earlier, we have learned that it's possible. It can be done. Actually, sometimes it's even more effective. And 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 when you when you learn that, you understand that, and you can make it more effective. Actually, why not? I mean, the the thing that I talked about, you know, this working from home, every let's say any serious business was always thinking about how do I enable working from home? And there was always a little bit of a trickle, you know, and even in our business, we used to talk about, yeah, we should let people work from home a little bit more. And we were enabling them. We were doing them. We were doing, and we were in this business, but, but the, but the, but the, but the tap was opened up slowly and slowly and slowly and slowly over the years, as opposed to suddenly now where hundred percent of the people are working from home. And guess what? As I said, even in the most stressful environment, the business ran, people delivered, people who need to get on the field, did it, people need to do from home, did it, people who needed to work remotely, they all did it. So I think this is irreversible, um, Dr. Bhattar. I mean, it, it's very clear this process is irreversible. Now, some things will go back, but frankly, I think we have lasted in this for too long. And I think our, our, our ability and our belief system has changed enough that I think these things will continue on my mind for a longer period of time. And I don't think that we can just say overnight, as if things go back, we go back to the old habits. I don't think we are there, and I don't think that will happen. Uh, fantastic. You're absolutely right in the way you put it. Uh, and again, one of the things, Mr. Tucker, is we can't predict the future. We don't know what will happen. And, you mm -hmm. know, the time has shown that, you know, uh, there are some things we can predict, but there's a lot that we can't. So, you know, looking ahead for too long may not even work. I mean, it's good to have a plan. Yeah. That it's mm -hmm. good to also have a plan B and a plan C mm -hmm. and be yeah. able to be able to respond like you've done. My last question before mm -hmm. I let you go. Uh, we're in November 2020. Uh, if I talk to you 12 months from now, whether for Business World or Exchange for Media, uh, what would have Mr. Ravinder Tucker achieved for Vodafone Idea uh, in, over the next 12 months? What's your wish list? What's something that you hope it happens? And of course, hope is not a plan. I'm sure you have a plan to make that happen. Uh, no, no, we, we of course have a plan, but I think I think for your audience and and I think for the team that I'm talking to, I think there are two things that are that are absolutely uh, critical and important and are top of uh, my priority. Uh, as you know, very recently we have launched a new brand, a unified brand called B. Uh, this is, uh, as far as I know, <laughs> the only brand that has been launched during this pandemic. Uh, it has been launched. It was created. It was, you know, uh, an inspiration, and it was done in this pandemic during this lockdown period. And and it is a digital first brand. In fact, just by default, it's a digital first brand. It was built, and it it has been very very successful uh, so far. Now, a year from now, I would hope that we can actually um, uh, not only continue to to deliver on the brand promise or deliver on the on 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 the on the basis on which we build the uh, build the brand and our customers experience that because one of the key things that we've said is that this 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 new brand this V the latest brand while it's built on the legacy of two very beloved brands Vodafone and Idea actually this takes us to the next step this takes us to a, a place where actually we go from not only we connect you actually we help you thrive in this world. So this pandemic was a perfect time for us to bring this brand out to say is that while we're connecting you, we know that this connectivity is very important. Actually, we enable you to thrive in this world, get ahead, do what you need to do in a manner that is actually sustainable and suitable for your lifestyle. So the whole concept of our brand is how do I help the customers th thrive? How do I promote them? 
And so our tagline is together for tomorrow. So this is what we are trying to do. So I hope a year from now, when we get a chance to talk about this thing, that actually we are delivering on that promise um, and, and actually our customers experience that. And in a way, we become a key enabler because as you said, you can't predict the future. And, and most of the time we can't go back to the old ways. So as we see that this becomes a more of a lifestyle for us in the future, we are the key enabler as an essential service, but as a key enabler, how can I support our customers and the users of this service to thrive better in business and be better tomorrow and have a better life? And I think that's what we're trying to achieve. And I hope that we are able to do that in a better manner than we do today. Thank you, Mr. Tucker, for talking to Exchange for Media. We're delighted and I'm sure our audiences have benefited from your insights uh, and your vision for the future. I'm sure uh, your brand that you launched during uh, these difficult times will actually thrive as we move away from Corona and this shall too pass. So we wish you luck and I'm sure uh, we'll be able to make impact uh, in the lives of the customers you service and the communities that you strive to make better. So we wish you luck and thank you for talking to Exchange for Media. Thank you, Dr. Matra. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Tucker and Dr. Batra. Thank you for joining us. Wonderful conversations and great insights for our audience. So thank you once again, both of you.